Hey guys, Cassie TV here with another YouTube video guide. Today we're going to talk about the Animate Guardian on all the mechanics surrounding the Animate Guardian. And also, later in this video, I will show you some different type of setups that you can use with it, ranging from low budget to high budget, and you can also mix and match whatever you want with them. And there's a lot of things surrounding the Animate Guardian mechanics. So first things first, I'm going to go through the basics of how it actually works. First off. The Anime Guardian has a limitation of which item level the items it can wear based off the level of the gem. So basically once you get the level 20 Anime Guardian, it can wear items up to level 20, uh, sorry, up to level 100. Which means that at level 20 Anime Guardian, you're able to use any items in the entire game to him. However, there are still some restrictions which I'll be showing you in this video. So my recommendation is that you should never, ever, ever use an Anime Guardian unless he's level 19 or higher and make sure that he has proper stats. In this case, I have him linked with um, Meat Shield to get him some more defensive stats. You can use um, Minion Life and whatnot and more of the details that you can twist and, and um, tweak with gear for that in, uh, later in this video. So basically, you want to make sure that he never dies because it's an, very annoying to go around and purchase items. So that you're in a situation where he dies, you have to repurchase all the gear, resummon all the gear. Uh, so that's really annoying. So what I'm going to show you first is uh, the kind of item restrictions. Yes, this is a two-headed bow because the guardian can wear a chest piece, a helmet, a pair of boots, a pair of gloves, either two one-handed weapons or one-handed weapon and a shield or a two-headed weapon. However, as you can see here, me trying to summon it does not work on ranged weapons, so he cannot wield neither bows or wands. So that's the first limitation that you'll experience with him. No bows, no wands. However, if you then summon him on an axe, so in this case you can see the enemy garden is currently just an axe, and to make him more visible, we're gonna put the chest piece on him, we're gonna put a pair of boots on him, and a pair of gloves on him. You can see him running around here. You see that he is wearing an axe down in the bottom. He's actually wielding the axe. If you want to replace the axe, you summon him by the resummon it by clicking another item in this case we'll take the staff and you can see that he is now wielding a staff instead of the axe so another little detail with the mechanic of this is that he is not locked in the gem itself if i were to unequip this gem which is now a level 21 anime guardian you have now de-summoned the guardian this is what happens when you log in after logging out you'll then have to resummon him you then re-equip the gem or just log in back then you want to resummon him. You want to make sure that you do not target any item. So this is often better to be done in your hideout when you resummon him to guarantee that you don't accidentally replace any of his gear pieces and then just summon him on the ground somewhere and he will be risen with the same items he had before. If he dies, all of the gear will be lost. There is a benchcraft on chess pieces that allows the Guardian when, uh, to drop the item on death. This only exists on chess pieces. So it's rarely worth it to even bother that craft itself. Um, so that's one thing. The um, next thing about the enemy guardian uh, in general is that you can actually de-summon him and then you can equip another gem and then re-summon him. It's very important that the, not the new gem that you summon him with is in a situation where he the item level requirement is still on par with the item he was wearing. I've done the mistake in the past where I've shown this to people where I used a level one anime guardian and that completely screwed over the guardian because when I then resummoned him again on the higher level, he only had the gear visually equipped, but the mods found it actually didn't work and he would just die immediately. So that's one of the times I killed my guardian in this league. So this that's basically how it works. So this is gated on your character. So even if you go to standard league with this when the league is over and come back five years later, your character will have that gear saved on you and not the gem itself. So that's the mechanics surrounding the anime guardian. Obviously you can wear a helmet. My current guardian is headless. Um, so that's the mechanics of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to list up some different sets for him ranging of uh, the base, based of budgets. And the easiest way to do that is to show you the starting low budget standard aura guardian or anime guardian. This is the standard approach of using Anime Guardian, and that is using a Leercast helmet. The Leercast helmet is a, a helmet, obviously. They're actually up to four chaos. They're usually around the one chaos mark at the moment, or usually around that price, but now they're about four chaos. This helmet gives you and nearby allies 15% increased damage. So that's a Leercast, which is currently around uh, 5C. 4 to 5C. That's Well, yeah, 4 to 5C. 
the other approach of this being a standard aura guardian is using the dying breath uh, right to change the base it's iron stuff now isn't it yes it's an iron stuff the Dying Breath does basically the same thing as the Lair Cast, which is giving you and nearby, well, nearby allies 18% increased damage. It also makes enemies have an increased effect of curses that you might be cursing, for example, so that you actually have an increased effect of that as well. And as you can see in the prices, they're about 3 chaos. So that's the second aura item. The next aura item is actually Victorious Flight, which is a standardized boots for him. Uh, which is granting movement speed in a very small radius around the Guardian. In this case, they have 10% increased movement speed to you and nearby allies. So that helps uh, melee minions a lot uh, by having the Victorious Flight with the Guardian as well. And also damage taken as mana doesn't really affect them. This is obviously a one chaos item. Outside of this, you want to make sure that he's as tanky as possible. So that brings me to the gloves. The standard gloves for this kind of setup would be to use the southbound gloves. Now, Southbound uh, is in a situation where you just pick it up because it gives you percent increased HP, I believe, 16, 12 up to 16. They cost one chaos, very cheap. However, these are not necessary, necessarily the mandatory item for this because it's a low budget. You can easily just take away the search when you're searching for items and look for a pair of gloves with just a bunch of HP, let's say 90 plus flat HP. And you can see that you can purchase HP and strength. This is 96 and a half HP pair of gloves with some resistances and what other stats for one Alk. So you can easily purchase a pair of rare gloves. And we're going to talk about corruptions on these uh, for higher budgets later. So this is one option for doing that. And this also goes hand in hand when it comes to the chess piece. Now, a, ch a cheap chess piece that I like to go with for low budget is... Um, the Ambush Chart Crusader Chainmail, because it's always about an Alk to a Chaos Orb, as you can see here. Gives you a bit of flat HP, some endurance charge when you take a crit, share endurance charges with nearby party members, which is pretty chill, but also it gets regenerate life per second if he's been hit recently. So this is something I enjoy to take on him, but you know, you can use pretty much any other item in the entire game. People go with Count's Heart sometimes, sometimes these are pretty expensive, right now they're about 20 Chaos. You can go for Growth Cool Pelt, this is obviously a much more expensive, but also makes the Guardian do a little bit of actual noticeable damage because of the global fist damage increase. But there's plenty of plenty of options to do this. My most most preferred uh, approach when it comes to the um, enemy guardian on lower budget even would actually be to just do a flat HP at 100 HP with maximum increased HP as well and just search for this. And as you can see, you can get with max HP and percent HP for as little as a Chaos Orb. So the chess piece is basically free uh, free, um, free roaming of whatever you want to pick on when it comes to the low budget approach. The same thing goes with the gloves. So when you go up to the high budget uh, version, there's a lot of different versions. Uh, the most commonly known version is to smack on a Kingmaker. Now the Kingmaker is an axe that grants nearby allies 45, see if you haven't identified one. Nearby allies have 45. Nearby allies have 50% crit multiplier, which is uh, the most common way to scale high budget minion uh, builds, for example, that actually scales crit. So Kingmaker gives 50% crit multi, uh, and it also gives culling strike to nearby enemy, uh, allies as well. Obviously, the price is a bit more expensive. So in this case, the Kingmaker is about one point, let's say 1.2, 1.5x. However, when you equip your Guardian with an item like this, you really don't want him to die. My 12 killed enemy Guardians this league is proof of it. I've spent almost 40 Exalteds resummoning Guardians this league for a variety of reasons. Um, so the best combination to make him survive, the absolute undisputed best combination to make the enemy guardian survive pretty much anything. He can still get one shot, but still survive consecutive hits or degen effects. The best way is to combine this with Mask of the Stitched Demon. So the Mask of the Stitched Demon is also pretty pricey. In this case, we're talking about 110 chaos. they are actually gone down in value, so that's pretty nice. So about 110 chaos for this. This helmet gives them intelligence, it gives them flat energy shield, and strength provides no bonus to life. Intelligence provides no bonus to mana, which doesn't matter for him. And he gets plus one max life per intelligence, so he gets even more life from this, which is fine. And then he's getting zero energy shield. However, he is regenerating 1% of life per second per 500 flat energy shield. So now, when you put a, an enemy guardian in Battle of 21 or 2021, uh, on a summoner build and you also put the minion life gem on him, he usually reaches between 50 and 60,000 HP before you put gear on him. That's not an uncommon amount of HP that you bring an enemy garden up to. 
So the way we combine this uh, to make this tanky, to make him get a sick amount of region, is basically to get a body armor with exactly like I showed you before, that has high HP with percent HP, and then also look for an open prefix slot. And the reason we look for an open prefix slot is to be able to benchcraft life as extra energy shield, which means that a percent of his HP will then be added as max energy shield to him, which will be zero energy shield, but that would translate with Mask of the Stat Stitch Demon to give him life percent regen. With a high pool of HP, he would then be regenerating a sick amount of HP per second. If you also want to go crazier with this, you can then add Chaos Resistance, which is something I generally try to do, so look for 25+. plus. Now, these type of items are still very cheap. This is a really good chess piece, but still about 3, 5, let's say 5 Chaos. Life Avenged Chest, about 5C. If you look at in-game, the cost for the Lifecraft on a body armor would be this one right here, 4 Chaos. You don't have to worry if it's 9 or 10% doesn't really matter. So it's a four chaos craft to get that sorted. So that's basically how you make the combination of Mask of the Stitch Demon together with a, the chess piece, give him a lot of region. Now, when it comes to the boots and gloves here, there's a few other things you can do with the hyper version. You can either go with the Victorious Flight and just a bunch of HP on the, on the gloves and just settle with that. That's one way of doing it. The other approach is to give him Calm's Roots to make him even tankier, give him more HP and, you know, a higher life providing uh, pair of gloves. And if you want to pump up his Chaos Rest, just get Chaos Rest on these pieces as well. So this brings me to the point where you can actually just play around with the boots and, and the gloves for the high body version the way you see fit. So we're going to go in for tricky mechanics uh, with what you can do with the Guardian. Uh, the first and foremost uh, is the Curse Bot. Uh, the curse bot approach basically means that you can go for example on an animate weapon build uh, you can look for a pair of gloves which has vulnerability on uh, ability on hit implicit value level 12 preferably and just search for this you'll see that just the level 12 vulnerability on a pair of trash gloves will be four chaos and you know 10 chaos is usually what you have to pay for it you can try to find this with some hp if you wanted to make him tankier might have to pay 10 up to 20 chaos for this type of glove and this would allow the guardian to curse with a vulnerability in my redemption specter build for example i'm doing this exact thing but i'm doing it with elemental weakness level 12 as well so i have elemental weakness through this however there's uh, there's a lot of discussions about this and thanks to askelia one of the subscribers here on the stream we've been able to test the amount of extra curses the bot the guardian would have for, to not override your curses. So if you're using um, a curse yourself, as well as an awakened curse and hit, allowing you to apply an additional curse, that means you're applying two curses. For a third curse to be applied, the guardian would also need to be applying two additional curses on top of this, which means that the chess piece would also require you to have um, an extra curse, that's a hunter modifier. He would also be wearing uh, windscreen boots which allows him to apply a, um, a second curse. So with this approach, you can make the, the Guardian apply a third curse without any of the curses being overridden. So that way you can get the Elemental Weakness applied. You can get yourself two curses through Awake, Curse, and Hit, or just Anointing or Specking into Whispers of Doom, for example. But this is obviously a bit of a tricky approach. Um, um, so that's the curse way of playing it. So that's what I'm doing in the Redemption Sentry build with Windstream, Curse uh, Gloves, and a Curse Chess piece. Um, and it's a really nice way to play. However, there is a, another tricky mechanic you can do, which would diminish his, or drastically reduce his survivability, and that is Eye of Malice. Now, Eye of Malice is very, very, very cheap. And the way this works is a bit tricky. So I'll try to explain it the best I can. The way Mal Eye of Malice works is that first off, it allows your minion to apply cold and fire exposure on hit. So that's pretty chill if you want to do that. However, you lose out on the Mask of the Stitch Demon uh, approach in terms of survivability. Obviously, he'll instead have an ES buffer on his EHP pool, but he doesn't get the region. Eye of Malice has a modifier that says nearby enemies have 50% increased fire and cold resistance. The way this specific modifier works for Eye of Malice is that it will take whatever numerical value of resistance the enemy has and then scale that by 50%. So 
So if we take a boss a resistances that he has, maybe after you've put EE up and curses, whatever, let's pretend that he has 20% cold resistance. He would then be scaling this by 50%. That means he'd instead have 30% uh, cold resistance in this example, which is obviously a bad thing. However, when you play minion builds, you want to bring enemies down to negative resistance values. So let's pretend you look at a more realistic uh, situation where you bring the enemy enemy bosses down to minus 100% cold resistance. This works the same way on negative values. So in this case, with a with a boss being minus 100% cold resistance, that would be scaled by 50%, resulting in a negative 150% instead. Now these numbers are obviously overkill, but the, the situation is that if the enemy has negative resistances, that would also be scaled 50% downwards. So that's the way I my malice works, which is really insane if you want to push your DPS to absolute absurd numbers. This is not what I'm doing in my 157 million shaper DPS Spectre build, because this would make the Guardian die very often, and I do not like trading for new gear for him. But it's a fun thing to do. There are plenty of other things you could do in terms of mechanics or tricky approaches with him, with the anime guardian to make him curse, make him um, taunt, make him blind. You can have, for example, modifiers on your chest that makes nearby enemies blinded. So you don't even need to worry about a blind and hit in a jewel. You can just have that on the gear. There are plenty of other ways you can do this. You can have exploded chest piece if you want that from him doing kills. There's so many things you can do with him. But the most generic approach is, is this is to be in the low budget approach with whatever chest piece. And the high body being the chest with the masculine stitch demon and the kingmaker and your gloves and boots doesn't really matter. So those are the most common ways of playing with him. The curse spot is something I've been playing a lot with this league and a bit last league as well. I of Malice is not as commonly used because of the fact that the anime guardian dies a lot. So that's basically this uh, video going through the uh, anime guardian mechanics, how it works, how you summon it, the limitations it has and the different approaches that most people play with. Um, Maybe I missed something. If I did, let me know in the comments below. And uh, I hope this video was uh, of at least uh, some um, some proper use. Uh, Seeing Kaka mentioned I missed or forgot the little detail of Crown of the Tyrant. So we should mention that as well. Crown of the Tyrant is, uh, thanks to Previ, very, very expensive. Well, they're crashing now. They're down to 2.4. There were three, four Exaltas before. This is a great way as well. The problem with Crown of the Tyrant is obviously, again, the same issue that you have with Eye of Malice and the low budget is that his survivability is not super good. Uh, Crown of the Tyrant grants you and nearby allies, so the Guardian and yourself and your other minions would be granted whatever color increase of damage and nearby enemies and minus resistances uh, through a Crown of the Tyrant. However, you lose out on the survivability on the Guardian by equipping this, but this is a very effective way to get a ton of damage. However, if you were to play with that, which is one of the suggested approaches in my Soul Rest Guide, you would have to use Avatar Fire if your da minion damage are doing cold, so that you EE Fire, because the helmet would then grant you cold damage, which would screw up with your, or fuck up with your elemental equilibrium. So that's one way to bypass uh, this type of helmet approach. I personally didn't like doing this because I felt the anime guardian was dying too much. Anyways, like I said, if you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button uh, for more content and subscribe. And until next time, boys, stay safe and keep rocking.